Starship has started its full stack testing ahead of its orbital flight. NASA's SAS is about to roll back out to pad 39B. China's launched their new space station module and a lot more is coming up in Monday's Tomorrow Space News. Let's start off the week with the big rocket first as the full stack of Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 have been getting frosty on the orbital launch mount. Relative to all of the tank volume available in the vehicle, not a lot of cryogenic nitrogen was loaded, but it is a good first step. Expect bigger cryofills over the next week as the testing campaign gets fully underway. Younger sibling Booster 9 has completed stacking with chines and grid fins on the booster. The launch site is pretty busy at the moment with S24, S25, B7 and B8, so I'm not sure if a rollout of B9 is to be expected or not. And just like that, Booster 8 was returned to the production site on Monday morning. Could we see the installation of components or could we be seeing the scrapping of this booster? Let's not forget about the younger ships, including this nose cone, which is for ship 26, and this nose cone, which is suspected to be for ship 27. Ship 26 may be getting closer to completion as its nose cone was seen moving back into the mid bay. Over at the propellant site at the launch site, a new tent is sprouting out of the ground. I have no clue what could be stored in here, as the tents at the production site hold rings and raptors, but this is a few minutes down the road, so what do you think? SpaceX has started taking orders for their new and improved flat panel antenna which is available for an upgraded Starlink RV service allowing internet connectivity whilst moving over land. The current stationary dish costs users an upfront $599 US dollars but this new motion able dish will cost an increased $2,500. It will be able to connect to more satellites at a time than the current dish giving users a more stable connection whilst moving which is why the price has increased. To try and encourage customers to purchase this very much more expensive antenna, SpaceX has warned customers that are using any other stationary service in motion will result in an instant void of their warranty. The monthly service subscription, however, will not change. Starlink for RVs will remain at $135 a month, whether you want to use it whilst on the go or after you've been on the go. It'll be available before the end of the year in territories where SpaceX has the appropriate licenses to sell the service. The next Falcon Heavy, at the time of writing, is just a day away, being November 1st, being targeted by SpaceX and the US Space Force for the USSF-44 mission. That could slip to the second though, as it still hasn't returned from the hangar. On Tuesday, it was rolled out of the horizontal integration facility at 39A before being lifted vertical. We wouldn't get a static fire though until Thursday as Falcon Heavy and the ground support equipment at 39A were having a hard time communicating with each other. Considering that this rocket hasn't been launched in over three years, we shouldn't be surprised that there were some teething issues. The time did come for the static fire though, which was the first time that more than nine engines had been ignited at 39A since the previous flight of Falcon Heavy, STP-2. Here's another Falcon Heavy launch for you. NASA has confirmed that Psyche will continue as we expected and it has not been cancelled. It is standard protocol for these kind of cancellation reviews to happen once a big delay is announced. It was nothing out of the ordinary and there is no need to worry about it any longer. The mission to explore the metal world, also called Psyche, has been assigned to the launch date of the 10th of October 2023. Falcon Heavy will send the spacecraft on its way for a Mars gravity assist in 2026 with an arrival time at Psyche for August 2029. The rideshare mission Janus still doesn't have a new home yet. It was intended to launch alongside Psyche last August, heading for twin binary asteroid systems. It's unclear what the future of this mission is at the moment as all we're being told by NASA is that they're evaluating its options. If everything stays to schedule, then soon we'll be seeing this monster of a rocket once again, with the Space Launch System's latest rollout to Launch Complex 39B, currently scheduled to begin at 1 minute past midnight local time this Friday. If you cast your minds back to when SLS was returned to the VAB to shelter from Hurricane Ian, you'll know that an immediate return to the pad was not possible due to the batteries which power the flight termination system needing to be replaced. Well, they currently are, and they'll be tested this week. The reaction control system on the solid rocket boosters has also been given a checkup. 
The internal batteries on the second stage, the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, have also been replaced and tested successfully. Orion's hatch and the hatch in the launch abort shroud have both been closed up, ready for rollout, and the cooler is expected to make its way to the door of High Bay 2 on Monday or Tuesday. All of this preparation is aiming towards the currently net launch time of 0507 UTC on the 14th of November, which will be a late night on Sunday for those of you in the Americas and an early start on Monday for those of you in Europe. Nevertheless, this launch is going to be the launch of 2022 and you will not want to miss it, so I think the awkward timings may just be worth it. It's a relatively quiet week of launches, but we did get a big payload. We're starting off with Russia's Progress MS-21 ISS resupply mission, which launched from Site-316 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan at 0020 and 9 seconds on Wednesday, October the 26th. This Progress vehicle was launched by a Soyuz 2.1A rocket, which delivered the resupply vessel to a transfer orbit up to the ISS. Sneaking between the launch and docking of Progress MS-21, however, was SpaceX's Starlink Group 4 31 mission, which was launched on a Falcon 9 from Space Launch Complex 4 East at the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California at 0114 Universal Time on the 28th. This launch delivered 53 more Starlinks to their initial 337 by 230 km, 53.22 degree orbit, with the booster supporting this mission, B1063, completing its eighth flight by landing on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, which was positioned just over 670 km downrange off the coast of Mexico. It's time for the docking, with Progress MS-21 docking to the Zenith port on the Poisk module at 0249 UTC the same day. This vehicle is scheduled to be disposed of before the end of the year, however the cosmonauts on the station will need time to unpack everything on board and then fill it up with rubbish before undocking can take place. The final two launches of the week are coming out of China, first up Cheyenne 20C on a Long March 2D from Site 9401 at the Zhiquan Satellite Launch Center. This mission launched at 0101 UTC on the 29th of October, delivering the classified satellites to an unknown low Earth orbit. And last but not least, we have the Tiangong Space Station Science Module Menshin, which launched at 0735 Universal today, October the 31st, from Launch Complex 101 at the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center on Hainan Island. Just like with the second module of the station, Wenchun, Mengshun will first dock to the forward port on the Tiane core module of the station before being undocked and moved to the side port by the included robotic arm at a later date. This module has an area where the crew can work as well as an unpressurized cargo compartment for zero atmosphere experiments. This is a hefty module, weighing in at 23 metric tons, which means that China needed to call upon their most powerful rocket, the Long March 5B. This rocket has a tendency to leave the core stage at an unknown orbital trajectory, leading it to deorbiting in an unknown location on Earth. Last time, it luckily ended up in the ocean near the Philippines, so let's hope that happens again this time. A rocket on display on your front lawn could be epic, but the delivery method has to ensure that nothing gets damaged in the process by falling debris. If you want your vote on where you think the Long March 5B will land, then why not compete in our bingo? Those who are closest will receive a shout out in the following tomorrow live show. It's not chock a block, but it is a fairly entertaining week coming up with four launches scheduled. First up, the aforementioned Falcon Heavy from the Kennedy Space Center, and following that on Wednesday will be EKS-6 on a Soyuz from Plesetsk. On Thursday, SpaceX will be flying once again, carrying Hotbird 13G into space from Slick 40, and will be rounding out the week on Sunday with a Cygnus resupply mission to the International Space Station, NG-18, named after the first American woman to fly to space, Sally Ride, from Wallops, Virginia. Before we get into what's coming up this week, thank you to all the citizens of tomorrow. These lovely people contribute financially once a month and in return they get access to member exclusive live hangouts, discord channels and more behind the scenes stuff. If you're interested, head to join.tmro.tv today or the join button below. So, what's coming up on tomorrow this week? On Wednesday, Dr. Tamitha Scove will be back with Space Weather. On Friday, me and Jared will return with a live show and I'm still promoting my documentary on the British moon landing that could have been, which you can watch right now. Thanks for watching, hopefully we'll see you next time, and goodbye.